you don't have any science background you're most likely going to spend four years if someone wants to come into canada mm -hmm. without any, any science, science background, background they would have to do exactly it was hard God. Well, you did it girl <laughs> i did it with the first class wow the pressure is getting worse hi guys welcome back to my channel if you're new here you're welcome if you're an oldie thank you so much for coming back my name is neka Izaya, and i upload immigration and lifestyle content right here on my channel you're welcome and i hope you enjoyed today's video so as you can tell i have a very special guest with me today and on my last video i promised you guys that i was going to upload like a video talking about how to become a registered nurse here in canada without having any science background or nursing degree at all so today my very special beautiful guest is going to be putting you guys through her procedure what she did how she came into canada the steps she had to take what school she went to everything just so that this video is a bit organized i'm going to be sectioning it into three different parts the first part is going to be her personal experience then the second part is going to be specifically on her nursing experience third part is going to be a, a q a session because i posted a video a month ago i told you guys to ask questions under that video so Josephine is going to be answering some of those questions i'll be asking questions based on what i feel you guys would want to know yes. concerning the nursing process right so Okay, are we ready? Yeah. See, I hope you're comfortable. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> because I'm about to snatch some information. <laughs> so, yeah, so do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Josephine. I'm from Nigeria. I moved to Canada about three years ago. I'm currently a registered nurse here in Ontario, Canada. Perfect. So, please just tell us how did you start? What's your background? What's your bachelor's? Okay. Everything. Well, so, like most Nigerian kids, I started out wanting to be a doctor. <laughs> you do. <laughs> wrote jam you know applied to study medicine but then i ended up with microbiology well i didn't mind because i wasn't cut out for all that studying stress mm -hmm. anyway so i did my first degree in microbiology at the imo state university in Oweri. imo state yeah Imso. 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 so that was for four years mm -hmm. and then after my nysc for nigerians would understand what mm -hmm. i mean by nysc i got a job a temporary job in telecoms and that sort of took me completely off microbiology. I ended up spending about almost 11 years in telecom. During the course of that 11 years, I did a diploma in human resources management and also did a master's degree in industrial and labor relations. I had my certification, my HR certification in Nigeria. So that was what I was doing basically before I moved to Canada. So when did you know you were going to move to Canada? Well, so I have a brother here who has been here for some time and he has always told me to move to Canada, move, but I wasn't really interested. Like, mm. I really love Nigeria, honestly. Yeah. I'd always wanted to just have enough money to travel and come back. Yeah. So I was just okay until my job was kind of threatened. Let me just put it out there. I lost my job due to some organizational changes. Yeah, yeah so that was in 2017. And that was when I made the decision to leave Nigeria because it's usually very difficult to get mm. a job after such a long time unless mm. you really know people yeah, and that was really, yeah mm. i mean so after i my job ended october 2017 yeah i decided to start this journey of okay. moving to canada and that was mm. when i started the whole process when did you move to canada so i moved to canada march 2019 but i started my process in 2017. did you have the intention of coming into canada to study nursing or how did that go for you when i decided i was going to move to canada mm -hmm. i knew i was going to change career but i had been interested in social work because mm -hmm. i'd always loved helping people work through their problems yes. you know? but then i i discussed it with my brother he's also in the medical field and he sort of convinced me that you know it would be better to study nursing because mm -hmm. as a nurse you can always find yourself doing social work yeah the opportunities it's, are way wider exactly yeah. but as a social worker you can't you can't just go do nursing mm. you know so yeah i saw reason with him especially mm -hmm. from the standpoint of 
job security so i made the decision to study nursing when i was still in nigeria i started doing my research and because i already knew i was going to move to calgary first that was where my elder brother lives so i went on linkedin to search for nigerian nurses in calgary yeah <laughs> I sent a couple of them some messages just introducing myself mm. like this is what I, I plan to do I'm still in Nigeria but this yeah. is what I want to do this is my background yeah. and I got a reply from about three people and yeah I spoke with them it kind of advised me yeah. I'm really grateful to those people yeah. and then with preparation too I was binge watching nursing videos mm. <laughs> following every nursing page yeah. I can find <laughs> on youtube yeah. instagram everywhere yeah. so how did you come into canada did you come in as an international student did you come in as a permanent resident did you come in with a work permit like how did you actually come in i started my permanent residence application in 2017 yeah so that was okay. the plan coming as a permanent resident mm. and then go to school do you also think that coming in as a permanent resident helped to jump start your nursing application well i think it helped because i had opportunity to apply for student loan like i had thousands of dollars saved up to yeah. pay for tuition even though my initial plan was to come to canada work for one year you know save some money but because i had the privilege of mm. applying for student loans yeah. so i went to school like same year i i landed canada so aside that yeah what else did it help you with well i don't think it helped me get admission whether you're an international student permanent resident you still need to meet the admission requirements okay. let's get into the nursing process right so let's start from the beginning make it easy for mm. us and give us like highlights the time frame okay until the very very last day you wrote your nclex exam and you came out successful just so that people can have like a, a general overview yeah. of yeah, the entire process okay so i started nursing school september 2019 and then first year ended i think april i think first week of april or there about 2020 okay so i had the summer off the summer break so okay. during the summer i worked as a psw and then started second year september 2020 finished second year april 2021 there was no break like finish friday the next monday you're starting third year so, so i started third year may 2021 third year is the shortest session. session okay so third year runs from may to end of july mm -hmm. and during that third year we also had first and second semester Is that third i'm year? telling you so we're having classes 9 a.m to 4 p.m every day we started third year on monday the next week Monday was meet them. Then you had the option to start final year early in August or take August off and start in September. What's the difference? So the difference is if you start final year early in August, you graduate in February the next year. But I took August off because I was already going mad <laughs> after that third year. For those of us who took August off and started final year in September, we finished in April. I finished in April 2022 and I took two weeks off, came back to Thunder Bay, started studying for my NCLEX. So I gave myself six weeks to study and write the NCLEX. Yeah. And I wrote the NCLEX on the 2nd of June 2022. What universities did you apply for? I was on this Nigerian WhatsApp group. Nigerians in Canada. Yeah. yeah. So someone had posted that oh, um, if you're interested in going to nursing school, mm. she has information for a school in Ontario. So I contacted this person. Were you already in Canada by then? Yeah, I was already in Canada okay. by then. She told me about Lakehead University okay. and the admission process. I was like, oh, interesting. So when I got this information, I went on to apply to where I finished. Okay, so that was Lakehead University. Yes, in Lakehead University in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Ontario. The good thing about the nursing program at Lakehead, because mm. I applied to the compressed nursing program, is that you don't have to do your prerequisites before you start. The compressed program in most other universities usually runs for two years but in lakehead is three years what do you mean by pre okay side just in case people don't understand there are some courses you should have done before you start nursing school so your first year you do your prerequisites so these are courses like um psychology 
anatomy, physiology, and all that. For most other schools, you do this before you even apply to nursing school. So you do these courses and then you can do them online and then pass before you then apply to get admission into nursing school. But in Lakehead University, they offer you admission and then you do this prerequisites in your first year. But then you have to pass, like you can't fail. If you fail one course, you're not going to the next year. Because that's like the foundation. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you only had to do this prerequisite because you didn't have a bachelor's degree in nursing, right? Even if you had a bachelor's degree in nursing, because I know someone who had a bachelor's degree in nursing, mm -hmm. but he still had to do this. Prerequisite. Yes. Why? I think for anatomy, anatomy and physiology is very important. Yeah. And nursing. I feel like they, they feel like maybe the way they teach it is different. Even if you're coming from another school in Canada, it's usually a thorough screening process for, for them to accept your previous education in anatomy and physiology. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they don't they don't joke with that. The only thing that was waived for me was maths. Because I had done maths in my first degree, yeah. in my master's, so mm. that was waived. Some people had to do it. Math again. Yeah. So, so it actually depends on your personal situation, kind of. Yeah, your personal situation, but then there are some things that they don't just take out for you. Aside from the prerequisites, mm. obviously you need to have had a background in biological science, mm. like biology, physics, chemistry. If you did not have that, then you would have to also do that. So for people who do not have a background in biological sciences, they tend to or do. science at all yeah or science at all yeah you know? because you know some people don't even do biology at the university level i can't remember yeah yeah, yeah yeah there are some courses you don't even need to yeah do. like for example now if you do something like law or something of course yeah. you will not do biology of course this thing yeah, yeah so those people would need to go and do a one year pre-nursing pre-nursing yes so right if someone wants to come into canada mm -hmm. without any, any science, science background, background right they would have to do pre-nursing exactly. first yeah. for one year before they do those prerequisites then they do the two years of compressed nursing if they want to make it compressed exactly yeah, yeah. and the pre-nursing thing you don't have to like go to a school you can do it online if you know you can study your biology and chemistry by yourself yeah but I mean, it's usually easier to go for classes if you've mm. never done those things before. Yeah, okay. So let's just say technically, if you don't have any science background, you're most likely going to spend four years okay. getting your nursing degree. Let's go back to your um, personal requirement. So you said that since you already had like a science background, you did not do the pre-nursing for one year, no. right? So you did the prerequisite for one year first before you now went into the main nursing so the way lakehead is structured yes that first year you're doing your prerequisites yeah you're also doing some nursing courses mm -hmm. you're not just doing prerequisites for one year you're also doing some nursing courses and you're also doing clinical placements so that's the good thing about the program at lakehead i'm not advertising lakehead yeah, university yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. i think they have a good program actually yeah. because mm -hmm. for most other schools you can do your prerequisite anywhere maybe online mm -hmm. some people are doing it online and working doing yeah. other jobs but with lakehead university you're doing this you're doing other nursing courses and you are going for clinical placements as well yes so you hit the ground running okay. for other universities yeah you'll make sure that you'd have actually done that prerequisite and pass and before pass you even first, apply to nursing school. Before you even school. apply, but with Lakehead, exactly. you do not have to do that. Exactly. Interesting. If someone doesn't have like a nursing degree yet mm -hmm. and is in your exact situation, right? Mm -hmm. Their program would usually last for three years. Would you say that? Three years, but it took me. I started September 2019, mm. and I finished April 2022. So technically, it's less than three years. Three years, but that's because you went to lakehead and yeah yeah lakehead, yes. yeah, exactly so that's what i wanted to clarify so oh yeah if, if it wasn't lakehead then three years yes if you were to go to another school aside maybe lakehead or any other school that does what lakehead does mm -hmm. you just have to go through that three years if you don't have like a nursing degree and you have like a science background right yeah so that is before. if you pass yeah in the right frame of time yeah I mean, it doesn't mean that it will take you one year to do your prerequisite mm. you might not pass and it takes you longer longer yeah or you might decide to say okay i want to do only one course per semester because mm probably have kids yeah. or you're working on the side mm. so wow this is really good information like i do not even is it, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about money it's so important without yeah. money you cannot even start this entire process yeah right so how much was your tuition fee 
So for permanent residents and citizens, yeah, my first year was about seven thousand dollars. The average was between six to seven thousand, six five to seven thousand dollars. That's for local students, yeah. for international students. Because I had a cousin who was supposed to start last year. The tuition fee was twenty seven thousand dollars. Yes, for international students. So it's a lot. I mean, that's just the school fees. Mm. It's not other expenses. And that's just for one year. Yeah, that's for one session. Let's not call it one year. It's one eight year. months. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for international students, imagine you have to pay twenty-seven thousand dollars for eight months, and then you're thinking about accommodation fees, mm. thinking about books. Mm. Oh my God, nursing books are expensive. Mm. So we end up buying used books because I remember in first year the text, all the text were like the nursing package, mm. the textbooks were about five hundred dollars. Luckily enough, you know, you have to keep asking people. Yeah. So there's a market for used books mm. like the older students sell their own books is so there a link like is there a website it's on facebook my nursing school has a group on facebook where students sell their textbooks, new textbooks and everything okay. so but i think every school i mean most schools should have that kind of setup mm. yeah where you can buy used books yeah it's very important it saves you a lot of money mm. yeah so a textbook that would go for 150 to 200 dollars mm. you could get it for 30 to 50 dollars well that's yeah. really good so you said your first year was seven thousand just yeah. the first about, year yeah about maybe six eight seven yeah like if we had to round it up to eight thousand right mm -hmm. so in total you spent like maybe six sixteen thousand dollars for your whole nursing no course. so the program is about two to three years mm -hmm. but you still do the four sessions but it's compressed you don't get breaks everything is back to back back to back so i did year one year two year three year four but in two and a half years <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Do you know what? Yeah. What here? I thought that if it's a compressed program, mm -hmm. right? Like the money will reduce based on you still do the four sessions, but you do it faster. So wait, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> international students, because I know yeah, I have so many international students that Do come here. Do you for school four times? Well, yeah, I paid almost seven times, so it's 28, but mm -hmm. a bit less than that because there was one year, I think third year was a bit cheaper. So that means you paid like so about 20 something thousand. Because that is what an international student would pay for what? just one, one year. year. In a nutshell, university in Canada is expensive. I look at some other programs like engineering and I see mm -hmm. they are paying like 35k, like God. And I see a lot of Nigerian students, yeah. like, how are they doing it? It's crazy. And you know, international students are not um, qualified for student loans. Right? No, they are not, they are not unfortunately. unfortunately. I made a video about working and paying your tuition fee mm -hmm. here. Solely depends on the program you're taking to. Exactly. Because if now maybe someone is going to a college and is paying like 15000 it's nowhere compared to someone going to a university and paying 27000 on yeah. tuition fee. So the seven was last year. I don't know how much it is this year. Oh my year. god. Yeah. So 20 hours a week will not cut it at all you won't even have that 20 hours exactly in, as a student. Student. exactly <laughs> i don't know for those who do the four-year program mm. but you see the compressed program you can work some people a lot of people work yeah you yeah know? yeah but then i don't know about 20 hours a week mm. or how consistent i mean you might be able to make some money to pay your accommodation, accommodation yeah, yeah if you're just renting a room maybe mm. pay 500 dollars per month and some of your utilities fine yeah, you might yeah. be able to but not tuition, tuition. There's no amount of work you can work. do. Even if you're not going to school at all, you're working 40 hours a week. Mm. $27,000 is a lot, of, a money. lot of money. Even people that are working full time, do you know how long it takes for them to save that amount yeah. of money? It's, it's just too much. I mean, and this is my own opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For your own mental health, yeah. it's not possible. So you just have to figure that out before you even Yeah, think at of... least if you're sure of your tuition mm. you can then try to work and you know pay for your accommodation, accommodation yeah. and all that stuff but would you say that compressed it was really difficult for you to be honest mm. the compressed nursing program was tough it was difficult for me i'm not talking about other people some people other people that i found it easy because i knew people who were working all through i didn't work all through because it was tough for me like Going back to school after a long time, yeah. eight years after, it wasn't easy, easy for me. And the way they study here, unlike in Nigeria, you have test 30%, exam 70%. Mm -hmm. So you can just be playing for the whole semester until it's exam time. Yeah. I mean, that was my modus operandi. But yeah. <laughs> studying here, your exam might even be 30%. Mm -hmm. Or even 25 and all those things yeah because you've all... been doing assignments five percent ten fifteen do five percent exam mm. like all through before yeah. the final exam yeah. so you just have to be on your
your toes mm. all through. There's no relaxing. Uh, it was tough for me. I'm not gonna lie. It was it was hard. Right. Yeah. Well, you did it, girl. <laughs> I did it with the first class. Wow, the pressure is getting worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you say this to... in the beginning? Eh? You lost it. Oh, my no, name is just fit a first class. Well, I thank God, Sha. I yes. wasn't. Oh, so you did. I tried. Congratulations, girl. Thank Congrats. you. Thank you. <laughs> I need your advice for my people, mm -hmm. right? Would you have preferred if you did do the compressed? No. Why? For me, age also comes to play. Yeah. Like, if you are still young in your 20s, mm. oh, you can do four years. But I don't think I want to be in school for four oh, years. years. I mean, the compressed program is hard. Mm. It's hard, but it's doable so i don't regret doing it well i had classmates who had to move to the four-year program mm. like who couldn't meet up with the speed yeah you know and they had to like oh so you have the switch. choice to do that yeah so it's definitely a personal decision right yeah it's a personal decision but i would say if you're much younger mm. just do the four years take your time off you know you have your holidays you mm. work do what you want to do because yeah. the pressure can be really much your clinical placements in final year you're basically taking on the patients as a nurse you're just being supervised mm. by a nurse like if you are assigned to a nurse now your preceptor you are the one responsible for that person's patient the person is just supervising what you're doing yeah, yeah. so you're basically doing all Everything. the work you're doing if it's a 12 hour shift you're doing 12 hour shift nursing students should get paid. some allowance <laughs> were you able to work as a nurse even without actually getting your license yet. So I don't know if it's in the whole of Canada, but here in Ontario, you can apply for a temporary license before you like write your licensing exam, which is only for six months. So you can start working on the temporary license while you prepare to write your NCLEX and then get your full license. What would you be working as, as an RN? You'd be working as an RN on a temporary license, but I don't know if the scope of work you'll be given exactly. will be different because I didn't do the temporary license yeah. thing so do you think they'll still be paying you as well as an RN? it's just a dollar difference and during that six months if you write the NCLEX mm -hmm. and fail you lose the temporary license but can you reapply for a temporary license again? no so it's just like a one time it's thing. a one time thing so most times when people apply for that temporary license they try to stretch it to towards the end of that six months before they write the NCLEX she gets <laughs> if you fail you lose your job yeah. and, like you automatically stop lose working everything. like once your results come out even if you're at work you have to stop because you're no longer an RN. You are back to it, not since students. Like for the NCLEX RN, right? How many mm. chances do you guys have? Because I know for the NCLEX RPN, mm. then it was three. Now they've made it to Rex PN and it's now like multiple chances. Yeah, I think it's multiple chances. For NCLEX, Yeah, right? but I think you you can't do right until after 45 days oh, or something. Oh, after 60 days. So now we're going to be going into the Q&A session of this video. We should be answering some questions. I'll be asking and I'll also be putting my input as well. The first question is, what's like your advice for someone who wants to come in as a nurse? Talking about bedside nursing, it's very physically demanding. You have to be mentally and emotionally prepared. Your heart just has to be there. I know some people come in for the money. The money no plenty like that. <laughs> I never see a bro. <laughs> it's physically demanding, but it can also be emotionally rewarding. Be open-minded. Be open to other people's opinions mm -hmm. and the way they do things be open to learning to learning yeah, yeah. you know ask questions you know show interest yeah. in their own activities yeah. you know yeah. yeah it doesn't take a lot you mm. know to just be that and when you go back home you be your nigerian yeah, self, self again exactly. how easily can a foreign nurse blend into a typical canadian health system are there cases of racism in your opinion so i wasn't a nurse back home in nigeria mm -hmm. but from my from my experience as a patient and seeing the way healthcare is run in nigeria and what i see here yeah it's totally different i think here nurses have more autonomy than back home you know and um, it's different so you have to still have to learn 
a lot some things right yeah it's, it's, it's very very different mm-hmm. yeah like i will use myself mm-hmm. as an example even when i was um prepping for my nursing exam it's mm-hmm. like i had to start reading all over again there's some things that are similar of course some basic mm-hmm. things like maybe vital signs and all of that mm-hmm. they are similar but there are some things like especially with this um client and nurse relationship nurse client relationship is different different from back, from back home yes as a nurse here mm-hmm. you have to take permission from your your clients or yeah. your patients to care for them. I want to check your blood pressure. Can I? And yeah. If like they that. don't consent to you yeah. taking their blood pressure, you can be charged for battery. Yeah. And that's a huge thing on yeah, your license. Get, you have to insure your license here. Yeah. We insure our licenses here. every year. Yeah, every year, so that in case you get a lawsuit. Mm. And then about racism, it's everywhere. So for me, when I just came to Canada, even up until recently, I wasn't so sensitized to racism mm. lived in a mostly black dominated environment yeah. so there are some things people would say i just count it as being ignorant yeah. and then if i tell it to my nigerian people they'll be like ah, that racism. was racism yeah. Like, yeah. yeah okay i didn't know mm. you know so yeah there is and in in canada it's not so blatantly out there mm. it's more of microaggression yeah yeah there's racism there's microaggression yeah. but then you rise above it it's not a fulfilling job would you say if you find the nursing specialty that suits you mm. yes it can be fulfilled and the good thing about this part of the world is healthcare is so diversified mm. you can do anything so yeah. just find your niche and you will be fulfilled yeah. that is what i would say for me right now i'm still yeah, trying to there. figure it yeah, out. I'm still trying yeah. to figure it out. Um, yeah. But I believe eventually I would find a place that, that, suits, is, that suits me yeah. and I would love it. It doesn't mean I hate it right now. Yeah. But you would always find what you love yeah. because it's so diversified. Yeah. Just adding to that, I also feel like if you find like a place that you feel very, very connected to, right? Mm-hmm. And maybe things happen, like you have like a negative experience, your reason why will kind of give you more resilience to keep on pushing right yeah and even most um older nurses or most um, more, more experienced nurses yeah. will tell you nobody has stayed in the same nursing specialty for donkey years yes. they always move around they tell you oh, i worked in the er for five years yeah. i did maternity nursing for three years yeah. I, like they've always you know changed mm. specialties at this phase of your life yeah. you this one might be good for you but yeah. then again the next we, phase we don't yeah, remain exactly. the same people throughout exactly. our lives you know 100 percent. yeah so that's a very good advice honestly yeah. and then i had someone in my family who passed away from cancer and yeah. that got me interested in oncology nursing one of my family Final year placement was in oncology nursing. Mm-hmm. I wanted to, you know, understand it better and be able to care for people living with cancer. So different events in your life might make you gravitate towards, you know, a specialty of nursing. So yeah. just keep evolving. She said, I hear nurses have very boring social lifestyles due to the workload. <laughs> How do you manage to infuse fun into your life? Being a nursing student, so working mm. as a nurse, it's very easy to get carried away with the amount of work you have to do. So, How so? Like, as a nursing student, first of all, mm. there's a lot of assignments and all that. So you have to be very intentional about having fun. Yeah. Like you have to have a plan for it. If not, you just get sucked in and keep going on like that yeah. you know? have a plan mm. like every week or every day or whatever i must do this and then as a new nurse now um the good thing is you're not working every day like when you're not working you're not working you know not like when you're a student if you're not having classes you're studying you're studying or yeah. Doing yeah, yeah, yeah so when you're off you're you plan, off so, yeah when yeah. you're off you're off so you plan something travel go out yeah. visit friends whatever you like to do for fun mm. You do it as a nursing student it's you have to be very more intentional about it not to just get carried away with all the work you have to do yeah i would say <laughs> try to find a balance in a way yeah and balance might not look like 50 50 for you might look like 60 40 right mm. or even 70 30 right depending yeah. on your lifestyle and depending on you know who you are as a person and yeah. where your life is at that particular time yeah. right so just try to find a balance for yourself in particular and not like generalized balance of right course. yeah exactly so because you can't perform an empty cup right and if you have to talk to somebody yeah talk to somebody yeah. you know it's not something we are used to where we come from therapy yeah therapy i started doing therapy when i was a student yeah. and it really helped you know was it covered by the school yeah the student health and wellness yeah. was free as a student 
students i used to say if i have not achieved this amount of studying or what mm -hmm. i won't watch tv the therapist told me relaxation is not a reward it's something you need you shouldn't say oh i'm rewarding myself with watching tv mm. because i have studied uh, 10 chapters no it shouldn't be a reward so mm. because i have not studied enough i'm not gonna watch tv mm. or i'm not gonna go out mm. you know mm -mm. i love mm -hmm. that yeah I so i had to so learn much. that you know like so so much your mental health is so important yeah therapy is important yeah. too I'm not forcing you to do therapy but if you need it, yeah. you go for it. Therapy is so important. I'm an advocate on my channel. They're already even tired of me. Guys, we've come to the end of today's video. Thank you so much. You're like, welcome. you have no idea how grateful I am on behalf of I hope, them. I hope I gave good information. <laughs> of course you did. And I really just like the fact that, like, it was a personal discussion that we had. Like, it wasn't like you bringing information from different places. You actually experienced these things. Yeah. And we are trying to learn from your experience, right? Yeah. This video is not to discourage anyone exactly. from coming into nursing or exactly. anything like that your situation is definitely going to be different but yeah just having like insight from her is just amazing so thank you i know there are so many people out there that like don't have the nursing degree mm -hmm. right but want to come into canada and mm -hmm. you know become a nurse and stuff and having this information i'm sure it means a lot to them mm -hmm. so thank you on their behalf we have any social media that they can reach you oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. i mean if you have any personal questions, questions yeah well you can email me like i mean not personal personal yeah, but yeah, like yeah. some guidance you know yeah concerning nursing yeah you can email me mm. on no i will leave her email address on the okay. screen and in the okay, in <laughs> and the, the description box <laughs> and just in case you have any questions you mm -hmm. can leave them in the comment section and hopefully she answers them or i can answer them or even mm -hmm. anyone who has experience with the question you might be asking right and yeah thank you guys so much for watching hit the like button subscribe everything press that bell notification <laughs> <laughs> what she said and i'll see you in my next video bye guys bye bye, bye. <laughs> that was so nice thank you you're welcome <laughs>